is the Conrad Alert. Civil defense information will be broadcast at 640. West of the Rockies, you're on the air. Hello. Y2K, how can we prepare? Stop a few of their machines and radios. Throw them into darkness for a few hours. We are fighting for our lives. My family must survive. Boom. For five years, thousand gallons of gas, air filtration, water filtration. Coming at you from the frozen tundra that is East Central Alberta, Canada, streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Rumble, and Odyssey. Welcome back to the workshop where we create community, find freedom, promote preparedness, and share success. I am Toolman Tim. Today is August the 11th, 2023, and this is episode 352 of Workshop Radio. Before we go any further this evening, I want to open up with this right here. And when you see it, you might know why, but let's just play it. So I hope you guys heard that. And uh, just as we are going live tonight, we have find a note that the um, voice of Dale Gribble a couple hours ago, a King of the Hill fan, last week's last month's patch inspired on, oh, no sound from us either or just from the video. If there was no sound, let's see if anybody can hear us. You guys hearing us okay out there? Let's just see what we got for audio. Yeti. Yep, looks like we're good there. Just on your video. Um, anyone hear us now? Let's just see. Sorry. If it was just the video, I apologize, guys. Trying to do too many things all at once. And uh, yeah, here we are. No, Oh, no video sound. Okay. All right. Well, that... Suck. Yeah, I uh, I did what I could. Let's see if we can... I probably closed it now, too. So, okay. Just as we were going live tonight, we found out that we that the voice of Dale Gribble passed away. And, you know, he is um, a character that people in the preparedness field really love. The Christmas episode this year was inspired by the King of Hill episode where uh, Dale was basically blown away by Y2K. He was absolutely... Uh, yeah, damn it, Bobby. <laughs> so... For those who couldn't hear the audio, it was a clip of Dale saying, guns don't kill people, the government does. And that was the inspiration for last month's patch, or this month's patch, really. And uh, yeah, so I know as we get older, uh, we were talking about that the other day with the uh, passing of Pee Wee Herman, weren't we, Henry? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this one just hit me in the feels, and I wanted to, for what it's worth, uh, dedicate it uh, to Dale Gribble and the gentleman who did his voice. So, yeah, it was what it was. Uh, Johnny Hardwick was his name. We're going to bring it up. We're going to read the article. Let me share it right quick with you guys. And uh, Dale is a spirit animal. I love Dale. He just, oh, uh, yeah, anyway. So, uh, and they were, and for those who don't know, they're, share, uh, they're in the process of doing a reboot right now as well. So let's bring this up. And so uh, Johnny Hardwick was 64, working on a King of the Hill reboot before his death. Uh, Johnny Hardwick was the voice actor best known for playing Dale Gribble on the animated series King of the Hill. He has passed away at 64. Hardwick was also a writer and producer on the long-running series. News of his death was shared by the production team, who said he was one of animation's greats. Johnny Hardwick was an incredible, beloved member of the King of the Hill family with tremendous talent, brilliant humor, and friendship will be deeply missed by all those fortunate enough to work with him over the last 25 years. His voice gave life to one of our most iconic characters and will truly be missed. Yes, sir. He will be missed, and uh, I, it'll be interesting to see where they go with the character. But, uh, yeah, another one gone, guys. So, I uh, what did I have tonight, Mrs. Cook? Uh, Jägermeister. Going to try some of that. So, we'll have a drink for uh, Dale Gribble. So, how you been, Mrs. Cook? Good. Good. Sorry to start out on a sad note, guys, but... Uh, I thought it was important to share because, uh, you know, I love to quote Dale, don't you, Mrs. Cook? So, you awake over there? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. All right, let's get your, uh, ooh, let's get the picture, get all these tech gremlins worked out tonight. There we go. How's there that? 
So how is everyone out there? Uh, let's knock the announcements out of the way now that we got the, uh, the big news story of the evening up and running. All right. So first off, Saturday evening, guys, sorry, Friday evening, this is our sponsor. That's Two Chicks Homestead. That's Aaron and Nate, the bearded chick. So give them some support, guys. Go buy uh, twochickshomestead.com or, you know, if you need some more uh, filling for your ear holes, then add them into your podcast feed and uh, give them an absolute listen because they're both friends and fellow content creators. And they took a, they, they decided that what we do here, they wanted to support enough. So they uh, became one of our sponsors, which was great. Number two, speaking of Nate and Aaron, we are having a get together there on, I believe it is September 14th, which is the Saturday. I'm heading south to Tennessee and we're going to stop there and we're going to have a, uh, a get together. And I thought it was just going to be a sitting around and having a drinks and a food thing. Hey, Mrs. Cook. But it turns out that uh, it's going to be more than that. And we're going to, uh, I guess we're going to sit around, have a Q&A session. We're going to do a live stream or at least a live recording stream. <laughs> See how it goes from there. And beyond that, we are going to, uh, I think Nate's going to do a ham radio demonstration. Then they're going to do a tour of the rabbit hutches a little walk with the plants. And then of course, my favorite fellowship, sit around and chat with everyone and uh, just meet like-minded folk. And if you've never done that before, it's absolutely worth it. If you want the super secret invitation link to the telegram group, that's in the description. I'll make sure you get it. And uh, also I have a uh, super secret patch too, don't I, Mrs. Cook? It might, it may or may not glow in the dark, eh? Maybe. Maybe, who knows? I'm not sure. <laughs> Radioactive, right? So, and finally, Picked up a new subscriber to the Patch of the Month Club. You know who you are out there, and we really, really appreciate you. And I just started seeing the first uh, year uh, yearly subscribers renewing. So that means we this month will be a year since we started, Mrs. Cook. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited. So thank you guys for all the support out there. We love it. Patchofthemonth.co, you all know that. And if you're new and you want to find out, ask around. We'll let you know. So what do you think about what's going on in Hawaii, Mrs. Cook? Um, well, I haven't really heard too much more about it because I don't I don't follow the news. And you sent me that video the yeah. other night. Well, um, I seen it on TikTok because we live in North Korea now, so we're not able to see any news stories. Right. Talk yeah. about that. What's up with that? What? what, what well, what, it's, why'd you say we live in North Korea? Well, because Justin Trudeau is turning us into a communist country. Um, we're no longer allowed to have news stories broadcast over Facebook. So can't share them. Can't read them. Um, <clears throat> probably Google or in Google too, eventually, eventually. Yep. Yeah. And then now, and now he's trying to, of course, and then he's reeling us all in with this climate change, dental benefits. And, and next thing you know, it's going to be the UBI. Am I missing something? No. Climate change, dental benefits, or is that two different issues? Two different things. Oh, I was like, I was trying to figure out how teeth and no. climate so, change so tie in what, together. What, um, for all our American counterparts is, uh, the climate change rebate checks that they are given out is basically because he has taxed us beyond belief with his carbon tax. Mm, and he's special. And base, so he thinks he's rewarding people by taxing us with this carbon tax by giving us quarterly payments of the climate, re, climate incentive action payment. So it it's ridiculous. And now he is... Um, you know, a worm on a hook with uh, uh, the dental benefits. If you make under $90,000, you're allowed to claim up to $650 per child under the age of 18, I think. I don't know what the age is on it because I, I've never looked into it because just another worm on the hook, right? Mm -hmm. And another now, and then it's this ridiculous grocery rebate because he <laughs> keeps inflating our prices. And just so everyone knows, like, our prices right now in Alberta are absolutely ridiculous. I bought groceries last week at the daycare. For one week, it was six hundred dollars. And I know that, they have no real measurement of that, but that's no, a fucking lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah. And but so he thinks because people are spending, like they're spending like quadruple what they did two years ago on groceries, but he thinks given a family of five. A rebate check of four hundred and sixty-seven dollars is going to make it all better, and of course, there's your other little worm on a hook because you have to jump through their hoops and play their games to get this money. And if you don't, 
and of course, and then when he introduces eventually, which they are talking about, is that UBI. Oh, sure. And yep. that's the universal benefit income. Universal basic income. Basic income. Yep. So if they if they introduce that, that is going to be the main worm on the hook. And then it's going to be 100% control. And then we are going to be no different than North Korea. And it, it's like, it, it's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. Because if you get that UBI, you are basically at their mercy. Oh, yeah. 100. And, and you know this. I mean, yes. we run into this a little bit in the business we're in. And exactly. we, we won't go into too many. Don't want to get us no. in trouble. But we know that we are at the mercy of some of that when it comes exactly. to funding for child care. And so. if you... if. And of course, people are going to love this UBI because it's going to be substantial. You mean I cannot work? Exactly. I can stay home, eat Doritos, stay, play but... Xbox, and not have to do anything? Oh, no, that's they not have... true. So do they just print money? What happens? So what, what happened? Tell me. I need to know. Well, what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to stay home and not do anything because in order to do get this money, it's going to, it's going to be a vicious cycle. So they're going to be like, okay, here's this money, here's this money, here's this money. You're going to get all dependent on it. And then all of a sudden they're going to start backtracking and be like, oh, you want this money? You have to do this. You have to do this. You have to do this. You have to go here. You have to do this. And then it's going to be a constant. And that's how they're going to control you. Do you remember and the old, going to happen. You remember the old meme that goes around every year at um, the time change, you know, the um, daylight savings time. Right? Yes. Yeah. You know, there, there's this old wise man and he says, only the government would believe that you could cut a piece <laughs> of the blanket off the top, sew it to the bottom and give you a longer blanket. Exactly. Only the government would believe that they could reach into your pocket, take out $100, <laughs> shove $10 in your other pocket and say, look at how much money I gave you. I, yep. You know, the entire. But the problem is it's going to be so much brainwashing and so much dependency He's going to give you that $10 and you're going to be so thankful for it and you'll do anything for it. And you'll because that's you'll, how they're going to train you because they're going to train every they're going to try to train us like sheep and monkeys. The, and that's you'll, what's going to you'll happen. turn your fellow your fellow people in yep. for the sake of making sure you can still play video games and eat your Doritos. Exactly. You? And as long as you do and and Ooh, we're trying to get they'll, banned they'll tonight, take, folks. <clears> they'll take a thousand dollars from you and they'll give you a hundred and it'll you'll be so stupid to the point where you'll be thanking them for that hundred dollars but here's the deal and that's what's going to happen at first i my suspicions are that the people that are getting the money won't be working anyway no. so they there'll be nothing i mean you can print and print and print and print but eventually you're going to have nothing left exactly and that's what's going to happen yeah hey and you know it i know it too well and hey just want to say look what happened look at north korea i watched the 40 next thing you know there's going to be posters of us of uh, the 15 haircuts we're only allowed to have and I don't have to worry about it. And then, then there's going to be posters about what your dress code has to be and everything. So you just, just you wait because yeah. that's what's going to, you know, and just so everyone knows his wife left him. Yeah. I was just going to say, so, so the entire yeah. country wants to get rid of him. And the only one that's lucky enough to do it is his friggin' wife. Yeah. So well, she go. obviously sees something that we see as well. Mm -hmm. So she left his ass and yeah. And I, I'm, I'm glad she did. You love coming on here, don't you? Just yeah, well. <laughs> gives you a chance to blow out all your frustrations from the week previous well, it, week. Well, it's just so frustrating. It's so frustrating. Babe, you don't need to tell me. It is. Well, you listen to like, me all the time. Well, and, it, and it's not so much for us, right? But the problem is, is that it's for the next generation coming up. Sure like, it it's is. for our kids. Because anybody who has kids that are early 20s, they're too stupid to realize how much money they're paying out in taxes and how much inflation you wave two, $300 in front of them and they think of it as a night out at the bar and they think it's the greatest thing in the world, but they don't realize what they're giving up for that. You know what I mean? And it's, I heard it's a really stupid. good quote the other day, guys. It went like this. It said, if you're not a socialist, when you're 20, you have no heart. And if you're not, if you're still a socialist, when you're 40, you have no brain. <laughs> and I was like, if that's not the absolute beauty of it. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, now we're going to start singing, and I'm proud to be an American. <laughs> you know that song? Oh, yeah. Yeah, my buddy Dave from college used to, he'd stand there and sing it like an asshole all the time, so. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, there's, uh, there, there's there been some things that I'm thinking about, so. <laughs> don't put it, don't put it out in the ether. It's bad <laughs> enough that Surrey can read your mind, and mm. Facebook gives you ads based on what you were thinking about while you were on the toilet, so. Mm. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Don't so. worry, I got stuff in the works. Yeah, <laughs> we're just gonna keep making our money. So yeah, no, it's it's ridiculous though, and it, yeah, like, like I don't know, 
and there's there's no province you can be in that's going to make it any better because they're all they're all garbage so it's like we are in the freest province in the country and that ain't saying much that, <laughs> no, that, that's, no. that, that's kind of like saying <laughs> all right guys i'm gonna give you a shit sandwich this one here has got 100 percent shit this one over here has got 98 percent shit yeah so you're, Alberta you're maybe has 26 or 96 percent. yeah so shit. pucker up baby because i got a shit sandwich for you but it's not that bad you yeah. know or like 20 percent poison right yep. yeah i no. used to say that when they'd say something was 80 percent organic i'm like well, what the fuck's the other 20 percent yeah exactly oh shit. boy yeah <laughs> shit and poison and everything else it's like well it's only 20 percent ground up you're good right yeah oh i know oh it's where ridiculous. did we go tonight this is fun <laughs> <laughs> we got to get Dave and Mary on here. Uh, that's uh, or, or we can go on their show some night, late yeah. Liberty late night. I think they do it at the same time on Friday night. So we'll we should do to... a grocery. What, what do you want to do? Like, like a grocery, like on prices or yeah, on... like okay. just so they so everyone can see what we're paying for groceries. Because just for an example, I went to the our local grocery store the oh, other man. day. That's bad for a thing of margarine. It was ten dollars. So. On butter, just a little pound of butter now is is, yeah. is what six fifty or yeah. something. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Now you got to remember that that's in those uh, monopoly money Canadian dollars. So we got to we got to we got to adjust still, your. That's yeah. still a lot considering two or three years ago you could get because I buy parquet margin mm -hmm. at Walmart for the size of parquet margin I buy, it is now nine eighty nine. Two years ago it was four fifty nine. That's fucking nuts. So that's it's knocking fats, Mrs. That's Cook. yeah. Well, that's what. We're paying, and it's ridiculous. So I did a segment on Hawaii last night. Yes, and uh, it's pretty insane what happened over there. Yeah, I know. Are they like? There's a lot of displaced people. Um, We're getting a lot of people flying back to Canada. Mm -hmm. So from there, you know, I I guess we'll yeah. see. I mean, I don't care. Well, we have our we have our trip book, but I was talking to Amy today. It's no big deal if we can't go. We'll figure it no, out. No, we were thinking. Um, she seems okay with Miami. That'd be cool. And uh, we mentioned New York. Mm. Oh, I love. I'd love yeah. I would love to go spend a week in New York. Just you know, just you know, running the roads down there. Byron has a video on his twenty dollar uh, uh, food prep, where he spends twenty dollars to see what he can get with it, and it's been getting less and less. <laughs> Said he wants to compare twenty twenty three with twenty twenty one. Yeah. But if, <laughs> take a breath before you go because it ain't going to be good. So, mm -mm. so they had uh, has about half of one city burnt to the ground. Yeah. I, I, Today, our last I read was 54 people have died and a bunch more unaccounted for. Yeah. Uh, yesterday was 2,000 people in shelters, and a, a couple of the shelters actually had to shut down because the fire came toward it. Wasn't like, um? Didn't you say there was like 25,000 people displaced or something? Was it that yeah, many? Yeah, it yeah. was at one time. Yeah, yeah. Or 12 or 25. We'll get the numbers wrong, but it yeah. was yeah, yeah. It, uh, bl uh, is that Blakesley Acres? You're going to hate us for this, but we love the city. Yeah, I do. Uh, like, if we went for a week, I'd want to stay right down Times Square. Mm -hmm. I want to, stay, yeah. Just, I, just so you can see people flash you. You know, it's like, hey, guess, little, <laughs> hey, little girl, I got a trench coat. <laughs> I, I love New York. I love everything about it. Amy's never been. Yeah. So, I, and you know, so I'd I mean, love to go. It was the first place. The reason it has, I know, it's an absolute cesspool at times. We haven't been there post COVID yet, so it could no. be interesting, but I was there as a, wet behind the ears, 18 year old Nova Scotian who had never been outside of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick in his life, walking around there like Forrest Gump who didn't know where he was from. Like it was unbelievable, but I had a, I had a ball, you know, I walked around, I was just like, well, let's just talk to some homeless people. And I spent a day exploring the city at 18 and it was fun. And I've, I've had a soft spot for it ever since. And I took you and the girls Five, four or five years ago, the yeah. year of the eclipse. We yeah, were there we the day before, time. the day after. It, it was really great. <laughs> Backwood says never again. Once and he got his fill. I get it. It's yeah. I you would never want to live there. But no, like well, maybe on the outskirts. Uh, I don't know. I'm good. No, like, well, that's the same way we feel about Vegas. Like oh, we yeah. were talking, like if we couldn't get to Hawaii, we're like, well, maybe we would go to Vegas, but eh. I'm kind of tired. I'm tired of it for a while. <laughs> so one step closer says New York City smells like spoiled milk. Last time I was there was 2005. Yeah, so well, Provo smells like cow shit. So. I actually contributed to this. So I have a nice story. You guys will appreciate <laughs> this. So 18, this was October 1999, two years pre 9-11. And what we did, we went down and we worked with this group called NYSEM, New York School of Urban Ministry. And basically what they did was, the, you know, it was like the, they took a bunch of, wet behind the ear 
first year freshman in university. And they took you down and worked with homeless, worked with all these different ministries around the city. And one of them was a food bank or a, a soup kitchen. And so they would get everything donated from the food banks and things like that. And what they would do with the students who would come and volunteer was they would get them to haul out all the expired stuff. So they'd get truckloads of shit from the food bank or from wherever near expiration. So it was the greatest thing ever. Do you know them friggin' half barrels of Miracle Whip mm -hmm. mayonnaise that you can get at like Costco building supply or yeah. business supply that you need, you know, um, a dolly cart to carry out. Yeah. So they had those and they're like, you need to throw them out. And we're like, okay, well, what do we do with them? They said, don't worry. When you're ready to throw them out, the garbage truck will pull out in front. So it was one literally like, you know, men at work with Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez or whatever. Yeah, that's what it looked like. So you get this dirty, skanky, nasty old uh, garbage truck that pulls up right on the curb, right there, right on New York City Street. They're like, yep, just throw them in. I'm like, just throw them in. And they're these big barrels of rancid mayonnaise. And it was a hot sept uh, October, sorry, just a very, very hot day. And he's like, yep, no problem. So we threw two dozen of them barrels in there. And he's like, all right, hits the compressor button. <laughs> Every bit of that rancid, rotten mayonnaise ran right out into the street right there. And you wonder how that city fucking smells. <laughs> there were rats there that day that were the size of Linus or of um, of um, our boy, Katie, our boy Arthur. Arthur. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bigger than Arthur, actually. I think. Yeah. Anyway, so that was one of the grossest things I experienced in my life. Rancid Miracle Whip getting squished up in a New York City compacting garbage truck on a hot October day and left right there in the street. So I hope yeah. everybody enjoyed that story. That was a good one. I'd forgot all about that. If it wasn't too rancid, it. they could come up with a piece of bread and scoop oh. it up and make a sandwich. Yeah. yeah, I bet they could. Sure. Yeah. Frig that. But oh my God. Could you imagine? Yep. But yeah, New York City is a special place. But when we went though, it actually wasn't too bad. Oh, we, had, we had a blast. Yeah, like it was fucking hot. It was, it was like hot. But, 38 yeah. degrees Celsius with 100% humidity. And we had the twins with us and we went right downtown because they wanted to go to that American Girl doll yep. store. And and honestly, like I didn't find it overly dirty. No, it was like, it was nice. Actually, it was actually pretty nice. Now, the, like I said, the last time I explored the back end of New York City was 2001, uh, 2000, yeah. before, you know. And what I found was that the front streets were really nice. And then as you get a couple of blocks off. That this, well, that's like any city. Oh, right? yeah. But this guy, he's, you know, he's this big black dude that worked at the Nysum place. And he's like, you know, I think he probably tries to scare all the kids that come and work there. But he says to me, he goes, do you guys want to go for a drive? Yeah, sure. He says, I want to take and show you a, a drugstore. It's a drive through drugstore. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I'd never heard of one. I thought that's pretty cool. A drugstore with a drive through So he pulls up and we get down into the subway bridge. And there's this old warehouse where there's a hole broke through the wall in the brick. And I'm like, well, what's that for? He goes, oh, you just hand your money in there and people hand you out your heroin. I'm like, are you serious? He's like, oh, yeah. So then he takes us over under the bridge and we go down the little, there's a little hill there and it's kind of wet and there's freaking syringes everywhere. I'm like, yeah, it's probably time to go. <laughs> but you know what, though? Remember, we were in Edmonton and oh, we parked at the... Um... Downtown at the arena. No, it wasn't at the arena. It was, remember, we parked oh, downtown Canadian for, place the for the Canadian place. The Canadian for our passport, which yeah. is a Canadian government building. And we parked in the underground parking and we're walking up the stairs. Remember, there were syringes mm -hmm. all in the hall and they weren't diabetic syringes. And I, this is in a Canadian well, they said government building. No. <laughs> Canadian government building, syringes in the stairwells going up. So what uh, would you do if you were in Hawaii? And there was a fire like that. If you lived there, I mean, I'd hope that we wouldn't be there. If we knew there was going to be fires, we wouldn't go visit. No. But if you lived there, that's what yeah. I was thinking about. This was an interesting exercise from the other day. But could you imagine living on an island and having zero egress, zero way to get away? What would you do? You just head for the water. I guess you'd have to have a boat, right? Yeah. Why you could to... swim? Yeah. It's not. It's not like the water. It's like, um, it's not like the water in Hawaii is like swimming from the titanic you know what i mean yeah. so like even at nighttime the water might be a little bit chilly but you're not gonna die of hypothermia that's true right and so like you basically you swim out and uh you know if you know your neighbors and stuff someone will pick you up so and the coast guard's always there i think but, i'd want to have more of a plan than hoping that somebody picked me up in the water well though. you don't yeah but you don't even have to swim out far out really. i know like just far out, maybe even to the waters up to here on you, right? Because it's not like it's gonna the fire's gonna jump in the water and get you. That's true. And most chance and fire probably didn't even go near the beach. Well, it, it wouldn't how, get that close. Exactly. Yeah, but true. how would it burn on sand? 
Well, right. like I said, I we we were talking. Was it last night? And uh, yeah, remember those Canadian heritage moments? Yep. Yeah. So up here, guys, growing up as a kid, the government would sponsor these one minute or two minute Canadian heritage moments. So yeah. things like. I smell burnt toast I'm talking about the guy who invented treatment for seizures Yes, and he would poke her brain and she'd be like, every time she smelt burnt toast, she'd have a seizure. So we know a Canadian figured that out. Yeah. So if you walk up to any Canadian now and you say, I smell burnt toast, they all know what you're talking about, right? Because we watched them when we were kids, right? Right. So, yeah. Or how about how Canada got its name? Yeah. He's... And then it's like this, do, 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 this is another Canadian, um, it information broadcast or something well, it, it was is like the, the equivalent music. <laughs> of the gi joe public service announcements the more you know you remember those <laughs> yeah. the more you know hey kids don't stick a knife into a toaster otherwise you're gonna have a really bad day dun 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 the more you know you know <laughs> so this one anyway was talking about the the the, the the families the pioneers that moved out to the prairies and of course they built sod houses and there was a massive wildfire that went through. And so they, if I remember correctly, they took the horse and them and they waded out into, now that I realize, I'm mm -hmm. thinking that's probably pretty nasty water, but it may have been a river. It might've been a slough and they just kept wetting themselves down all night yeah. while the fire raged around. So, um, so if we did them today, uh, one step closer says Don Cherry Appreciation Day. I'm going to interrupt. I met Don Cherry. Yeah, you used to yeah, work for him. I used to work for Don Cherry at his uh, Don Cherry Sports Bar and Grill. And I'm going to, they had good chicken wings, right? They had good chicken wings, but I will say something. Don Cherry is what he is. He's very overrated. <laughs> like he, he's, he would, he comes into the restaurant and he came in the kitchen. He, he's a dick, right? Like he really is just like most of them. Just the way you would expect and, him Just to the be. way you expect him to be. But um, like just, but he's not, he's not one of those guys that you would ever say like, oh, I'd love to meet him again. Yeah, I could care less. Like I, I thought he was a dick. Uh, everybody, all the kitchen staff thought he was a dick, and like, really, and, and his restaurant sucked, and that's why it shut down. So it's like, what'd you have to wear? Do you have some kind of cute outfit or anything? No, I worked in the kitchen. Oh man, yeah. yeah. Who? What the hell is a Don Cherry? That's uh, the hockey guy. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> he was recently he, canceled. I, I don't want to be rude. He he's still. He is still. Around, he is right? still okay. Yeah. yeah. Like he's quite old. I think he's got to be pushing what ninety. He is a Canadian icon. So up here we have the sport called hockey. I know a lot of Americans <laughs> aren't familiar with it, but uh, we play it in the winter time when the ponds freeze over your hosers, and use a stick with a blade on it where you shoot hard rubber discs at each other and try to hit each other in the face. That's kind of the idea. And so he would. Oh, yeah, he's 89. I was yeah. close. Yeah, so he's 90. Let's see if we can show you. I'm going to bring you up a picture. So once you see him, you'll know who he is. Yeah. Well, no, they probably won't. Oh, probably. I mean, like if you're everybody. an American, how would you know? I mean, he. Well, because he's everywhere. Yeah. So this is the dude here, the old guy. Um, he, would, he looks he, like Colonel Sanders from KFC. So he was the co host of Coach's Corner for many, many years on Hockey Night in Canada. Mm -hmm. In Canada, Saturday evening, going back to the radio days, a a national staple was hockey night in Canada. So every Saturday night they'd have at least a double header of hockey games and they would play. And so, I don't know, since the eighties, mm -hmm. him and Ron McLean, these two would host coach's corner. He always wear, he never wears the same suit once, yep. twice, never wears it twice. Always very loud suits like these. Very right? loud, very opinionated, very ignorant. His claim to fame was that he was a coach for the Boston Bruins for like, Oh yeah, so he, a he had a cup, of, cup of tea for about two years. Yeah, and he was—he's very opinionated. I love the dude. Mm -hmm. You don't agree with everything, but I love the fact that he would speak his mind, unlike most people. And so eventually, cancel culture caught up with him, and they fired him because he was an old man who yelled at clouds a lot. So. Exactly. Well, same type of thing as like Roseanne Barr and oh sure, all that. Like just you know, all those little marshmallow snowflakes can't handle the truth. And, you know, like, and he, like I said, like, he is exactly what you expect him to be. And and on TV, he's a giant dick. And when in person, he's a giant dick. So it's like, but like. Hey, you know what? What you see is what you get with exactly. him. Exactly. So. And well, and that's what I appreciated about him. Like, I, I could care less because I didn't, I don't like hockey anyway. But, but like, you, he, he wasn't fake. No. No. What? It's who he was, I, right? I mean, I do my best. I, I try to portray that I'm a massive dick online and when people meet me in real life i want them to know that i'm also a massive dick <laughs> and once they know that i mean that's just called being genuine to, to yourself right yeah and when he was genuine yeah totally like he was like or he is he is yeah. like he, 
what what you see is what you get. Absolutely. With him and and honestly, the marshmallow I, snowflakes just couldn't take him anymore. I did meet That's, his co-host Ron McLean one time. The oh, year yeah. the Blue Jays won the World Series, he came through Digby for the the celebrity golf tournament. Oh boy, except it was a baseball <laughs> game. So yeah, so yeah. that was our discussion on. Canadian history and Canadian <laughs> politics and um, <laughs> New York City and everything else. Do you want to? So, one of the reasons we do these Friday night or Saturday night shows is so that we can get shit done that we wouldn't necessarily do. It gives us an excuse to audit things. So, we did our grab and go bags a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah. And this one's going to be pitiful, guys. Sorry. Because ah, we know we have slacked big time on this. So, but the thing is, it's real. That's what yeah. I, you know, whatever. We're going to go through our first aid kit. You gonna make a list so um, that you know what we need as we go along, yeah, or at I'll least we can go through and we list. can. All right. So should I turn a bit of a light on here or not? Yeah, it doesn't matter. No, Are you good? I think you'll be able to see the items better without it. Okay. Well, let's just kind of go through it. So this, I want to show you guys if, if this will show up. So here's one of them. This is our over-the-counter medicine one, right? Yes. So this is a sterilite container, and it has, if you can see, let me show you has these uh, seal down lids. It's about as waterproof as we want it. Yeah, right? these were expensive when we, <laughs> they, yeah. they seemed like a lot of money when we first bought them. Yeah. So, and you see the blue, the blue around the outside is a rubber seal. And uh, Chuck People says he's ready for the seat. Chuck's there, he's ready to judge us because he, he's a medical <laughs> expert. So, <laughs> so yeah, so anyway, uh, and if you guys have suggestions for things that uh, we should add to our list, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. But so. just keep in mind though, there's probably things that should we, be added that have been in there that yeah. have been used, so. So this is kind of funny. This is, uh, here, you want to hold them up and. Okay, so this, this here, uh, we are, this, we, yeah, this is American. This is American. Kind of tilt it so you tilt can get your light. I don't know. You'll yeah, so there. We, there you um, we had to buy this because we, up here in Canada, we had a shortage. What is it? Uh, it's children's ibuprofen. Right. Liquid. But we had a, a shortage of it. And we had a really bad shortage of amoxicillin. And... Um, Basically, almost like all antibiotics Tylenol, for kids, yeah. like Ty anything. Yeah. yeah. So, so they put a restriction in the store where you're only allowed to buy like one. So I went on Amazon and I had to ship to our American address because, we, you know, like um, our kids our are a little bit older for this, or a little old for this, but we have nephews. Yeah, we sure and do. And we have a nephew. We have two of them. I think we have more than that. Well, two of them out here. Sorry, we have four <laughs> nephews. But two of them live out here. And actually, our other two nephews would be too old for this anyway. Yeah, yeah, they would. So this, too like, cool you know, like, school. it's good to have. And actually, in a worst case scenario, our 13-year-olds could take this. They just have to, like, double up on it. Yeah, yeah. So these but, were, uh, these are free samples. We should probably get rid of those. Yes, these are probably Mostly. past the expiry date. Although, when I took, uh, when I worked at a pharmacy, the pharmacist told me that it was uh, 10% for every month past the expiry date. So, and, so, and Chuck can probably... Uh, talk about this yeah for the most part if um like solid state pills so like hard yeah. pills they tend to hold up if they're stored properly they'll hold up for a long time yeah. liquid if i remember correctly it was that was like 10 percent a year that it would yeah, lose 10 its potency. A year something so. now but you know what the, these this are, is not medical advice guys, no this so. is not but you know what though in a shit hits the fan situation and you've got a little one with like 102 fever, 103 fever, and this is only like 50% effective, and it can bring it down a little bit. It's still 100% more effective than having nothing. Than nothing. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, Dayquil. So we keep that a lot. We um, have a lot of Dayquil. I just wanted to show out. Backwood says we have a few totes of medical supplies from my wife was doing visiting nursing. Do you remember many years ago? We have the... we had. It's not out here. Is it the Victoria Order of Nursing? Yeah, B-O-N. B-O-N. So yeah. they would come to your home if you were recovering from surgery. They would always give you way more supplies than you were supposed to have. Exactly. And we, would, we would save them for sure. And yeah. Blake C. Aker said uh, that shortage sucked having young kids. We stocked up just before that happened. Yeah. And pre-COVID, we had a, very good, a fairly good storage. But here's the difference, guys. The difference between being prepared and not being prepared can be as simple as a day's notice, right? Yeah. So if you're paying it, oh, Chuck says shake it up once in a while. Yeah. So if you're paying attention to the news and you think shit's about to go sideways, what can you do? What did we do? We we kind of, we were paying attention to the whole COVID thing, remember? Yeah. And about a day, maybe two days before everyone else went nuts, 
we took stock of our inventory and we went out and doubled up on every over-the-counter medicine we thought we could get. And I right? bunch of, and I bought a bunch of stuff from uh, Amazon. Yep. And uh, and we, we went and bought a bunch of stuff from Walmart too. Yep. So. so we were watching, and that's part of it. You know, you might have some, but you know, twenty-five percent of being prepared is being informed. And if you know something's coming, pulling the trigger. Because what's the worst that's going to happen? We're going to buy a bunch of over-the-counter medicine that's not going to expire, and we're going to be set for later on, right? And and there's <clears> nothing <throat> wrong with buying, um, like, uh, no-name brand, too. No! Like, because they yeah. legally have to have the yeah. same active ingredient. Yeah. Our local pharmacy has a deal where if you buy 10, 10 you buy 10 no-name products, you get the 11th free. Yes. So it's a good way to make some money. Uh, what do you, uh, okay, so we have Benelin. Which is for sore throat and cough. You'll see we got a lot of different versions of cough and cold. Yes, medicine here. Um, this is the this is our the no name brand. This is called Atoma, and this is for cough and chest congestion. And then we have this. That's my least favorite. Of this all is the cough. The, yeah, it but this tastes is like shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really good for mucus buildup. Um, and again, this is the Atoma stuff. So what do we got there? That's for when I drink too much. Uh, this is Pepto Bismol. Uh, I'm like I'm sure pretty much everything like this is available down in the. Uh, we bought is, that in the states, didn't we? Uh, did we? No, this nope. is this is Canadian. I don't know if you guys have it, but it's like gravel. It's Keopeptic. Um, it's liquid. You can. It's really a. It's a really thick liquid. It actually, it looks like watered down chalk, but it's really good for for kids. And it's a, and it's good for so, the, like diarrhea. Rachel says I very very rarely use prescriptions, but I always get them filled and into the fridge. And says painkillers, muscle relaxers are good to have on hand. Absolutely, if you have a prescription, fill it. Even if you have no desire to use it, doesn't matter what it is, fill it and hold on to it. We have a lot of that stuff over the years yes. that we've managed to uh, make sure we've uh, stocked up on, and. I know I've said it, but for the people that are listening that haven't followed us before, the thing that I try to do is fill my prescriptions two weeks ahead of time so that I can gradually build up a surplus of prescriptions. Right, Mrs. Cook? Mm -hmm. uh, Chuck says, treat OTC meds like canned goods. Use them and rotate. Keep twice the, I'm going to think, I think he means keep twice the stock of what you think you have as prepared. That makes sense. Uh, so, um, calamine lotion. For those nasty bug bites, um, stuff I'm not saying is just uh, duplicates, yep. of course. And then we always keep several boxes of pills. We have Sudafed Sinus. Uh, this is the Atoma stuff again. That um, that is the no name stuff. Basically. Yep, liquid yep. capsules. Generic brand. Generic brand, yeah. And it's um, and we a lot of our medication that we have to buy um, has to have a cinnamidine. Uh, cause I'm not allowed to have NSAIDs. So every, why is that Mrs. Cook? Because of my stomach. I'm not. Oh, oh yeah. But yeah. well, it was, oh, well, and I, and I have, is a leave an NSAID? Yes, it is. Okay. And I have a bad, bad allergy to naproxen and any type of, so anything we buy is always acetaminophen because I can't have. So we were really anything. excited when a leave finally came to Canada. Absolutely. And then you took it. One pill. One pill. <laughs> and then we had to go to outpatients to get your ring cut off your finger. Ring had to be cut yep. off. And then I was going to outpatients for two days. Remember every That's for, right. uh, sh shots of Benadryl. Yep. So, but this is junior Advil because the, the twins can take junior Advil. Although I think they've, they've pretty much outgrown it. Outgrown it. So they again, take this is time probably off. time to maybe pass that on to the nephews. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Noah could still take that. And this is a uh, cold and flu again, a Toma with acetaminophen. Um, another one from Amazon. We're definitely going to have to make a list of the few things we need to stock because we yeah. have a lot of some things and almost nothing of others. We always keep Orgel. This is very, very important the, for. It's good for adults and kids. Oh yeah, it's this is for this is for adults. Yeah, because there is nothing worse when you have a toothache. That is the worst feeling in the entire world. Chuck says, "I want to get this comment up on the screen here." Says uh, OTC meds should be on a monthly regular purchase for your preps have a budget and regular uh have a budget and regularly 
by OTC meds. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's one thing we don't really have on our Amazon subscriptions. You can't really get a lot on so Amazon. This though, is right? what we run into Maybe here, Walmart. guys. The American Amazon does. The yeah. Canadian Amazon doesn't. So uh, we could check uh, Walmart because yeah. if we made a list, because we've done really good over the years with our Amazon subscriptions. Yeah, and we were for a while, I was just taking like 25 or $30 a month and I was just buying extra stuff, mm -hmm. right? And when I would go to town, you'd be like, here, hun, go go stock up on a list. But the, one right. of the problems we ran into for a while was that some of the stuff wasn't available, remember? Exactly. So I'd go to buy more and you're like, oh, shit, they don't have it. So we got a big thing of Tylenol. Oh, yeah. Big, buy that acetaminophen in yeah. the biggest friggin' package you can find. And then we've got, of course, these are open because uh, our kids have been into them. And yes. our older kids. Uh, so, again, these this is the regular Tylenol sinus. And then we've got our Atoma uh, flu. Is that daytime and nighttime, nighttime flu. Nighttime. And then this is sinus medicine. This is like for allergies. or. We love buying the, the, the daytime, nighttime combination boxes. Because, yes, it does save. Uh, it's just, yeah, save space. And, yeah, that's... Have you tried this? So, I have. This is Imodium. Yeah. You can get Imodium in the States, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. But the liquid, though. Have you tried that? I have, yeah. Okay, I haven't. I don't really like the taste of it, but you know what? It works really good because... Because I I'm gonna, I want Chuck to... Oh, I cut you off, yeah. baby. Go ahead. No, so Imodium's good for... Like, this is rapid relief for, like, diarrhea, upset stomach, so... it. I would venture to guess that Imodium could probably stop some people from having a bad case of dehydration mm -hmm. because it works... Hey, Spags Unfiltered. Great to have you in here. Uh, Spags is going to be on the show sa Sunday evening, guys. So look out for him. We're going to be chatting about all things Midwest Preparedness Festival and a few other things. So, But Imodium is like a dream drug. I don't think you're supposed to take it all the time. No, but if, and you know what? And it's really good, especially the liquid for the little, for little guys. Yeah. Because little guys can get dehydrated really, really quickly. Absolutely. So like, it's, it's not something that you give them on a regular basis, but if you're, again, if you're in a shit hits the fan situation and you've got a little one with a stomach bug and you have a fear of them getting dehydrated, hopefully, you know, something like that might actually work. Chuck says dental preps, eye, ear, nose, and throat are often overlooked. Dental putty, i.e. temporary fillings cheap and should be a must have. Now, I don't know if we can buy that around here, but I bet we could find it on Amazon.com. Oh, probably. So just so you guys know, the reason we say Amazon.com is we, and I've, I've mentioned to a lot of people, we have a separate Amazon in Canada called Amazon.ca. It's like the uh, the weaker cousin of Amazon.com. It, it has less shit for higher prices. So so we have uh, heat packs. Yep. Then uh, we have, like, this is just a little Ziploc bag we have. This is Voltaren. It's like a muscle rub. And then we have two of the Clear Eyes eye drops. We did um, we did have polysporine eye drops in here, but they I, are probably so. I we, took them out the other day. Yeah, they're actually in the cover. Uh, polysporine eye drops work really good for pink eye. Um, and then there's the ear no, there's the ear drops that work for, good for ear infections. Backwoods Butcher says, I always keep a jug of livestock anti-diarrheal meds in the truck just in case. And I'm guessing he means for himself, but he might not. I don't know. But well, I remember hey, it works. <laughs> many years ago before we got married, I was working at Dairy Queen and I had a very bad case of diarrhea. And let me guess because you were eating ice cream or drinking. I don't know what happened. <laughs> anyway, one of the girls says, all I have is my doll. Yeah. And uh, I took it. It's for period cramps and it, it did the trick. So yeah. I'm sure I probably shouldn't have. But uh you know, I'm also the type of guy that when I was 20, used to take a glass of water and two Tylenol 3s before I'd go to bed to kill a hangover. So, so those days are stupid. So we have, this is 81 milligram aspirin. That's the for, heart attack medicine, right? That's the heart attack medicine because, you know, we're getting older. Yes, we are. And then we have, like, this is what we call a goodie bag. This is where we put, so if we have a sleeve, if the box falls apart or, yeah. you know, and, um, you might not, you guys probably know this anyway, but you can always Google if there's a number on a pill to see what it is. Exactly. And well, and most of this stuff has like, um, it's better than the this is, days. these are the Imodium pills. And then these are suppositories. And this is to counter react uh, the Imodium. Some <laughs> X-lax. <laughs> so, so like, it, it's just like a little tiny goodie bag there. 
Chuck says, if someone has a bug, let the diarrhea take its course unless it's been over 72 hours. Remember, it's getting rid of the bacteria. That's a pretty good uh, tip, actually. And the rest of that's loose stuff that we probably... Well, and then the, well, there's a couple things. Through it? Okay. So we keep, uh, we always have our thermometer. Yep. We have multiple, mul multiple thermometers. Thanks to COVID, we probably have 700 thermometers. Yeah. And then we, of course, and then we have our, this is... Is that hemorrhoid cream? It's for hemorrhoids yeah. because you never they happen. know. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so they, they happen. happen. <laughs> they do. Unfortunately, we always have, uh, where's the, these are all, this This is just a modium. It must have fell out of We got bag. Charlotte's And um, then we have inhalers. puffers. Yep. We always have inhalers. Um, Charlotte uses the them as ventolin, needed. Yeah. Well, Ventolin is good just for like, you know, like my bronchitis and sure. stuff, right? Yep. It's, um, and then of course, then we have her steroid. So these these are just used as needed for her. She's not a complete asthmatic where she needs them all the time. <laughs> I love Chuck. Chuck but, just said her over the counter preps are very good. Thank you, brother. Oh, thank you. I've had him on at least <laughs> twice. He needs to come back on again. So yeah. So uh, so that is basically you, your mother is that's so <coughs> that's my mother in law Linda Jean Cooper there guys. I'm going to bring up her comment because it's a really good comment. Yeah. And she said that you need to include batteries for those thermometers. And yes. That, yeah, that's actually is that. Let me check this guy. I don't. We. So, I have an ear one that I took out of here. You know what sucks day. about this? Yeah. Um. Anyway, we we have some of the uh, the point point at your forehead ones. I just realized, and that's a good point, man. It is not my standardized batteries. I normally keep the twenty thirty two coin batteries for everything. So just open this guy up, and that's the size, about the size of half a dime. Yep. So either we get rid of this, or we stock some more batteries. And you know me, I'm not a big fan of non-standard batteries so so and then we always have sanitizer oh yes and we then lots of that this around. is nausea we bought that in the states yeah it's like they're nauseating pills for nausea and then i always have nexium oh. so, so you know what byron says any old school mercury thermometers we don't have one anymore no i don't can you i don't anymore? know if you can because i have many oh my god as a kid being sick as a friggin' dog and mom taking that long tube of glass and shoving it under my tongue and said, would you just hold it there? I was like, stop you were saying in your butt. <laughs> no, I never, I don't think I ever had that. But I, so <laughs> just throwing it out there, and maybe this is a uh, crazy idea, but I wonder how an EMP would affect a digital thermometer. I don't know. And maybe, it, uh, my guess is it wouldn't affect it at all, but maybe it would. And if anybody has any, I don't know. And you we know. have Dramamine. Oh, and yes, we got we that from Dramamine. the States. Yeah. So I had to buy some of that. Because we do know that the old school mercury thermometers wouldn't be affected by an EMP. So exactly. that's rather interesting. Not that I'm super concerned about that affecting a thermometer, but I'm just saying it would be. We did, you know what we did have for a while? Um, when I used to when I used to go and get worked on at outpatients and things, whatever they would bring out, I would bring home with me. And uh, they had uh, the sticky thermometer strips, remember? We yes. had some of those for a while. Those were good. Well, and, and that's the thing too, like... Um, what like a thermometer is really good to have from but from what i've learned from working in the ch in the child field yeah is that working with kids working with kids but like it is a lot harder for an adult to have a fever for numerous days mm. than it than it is for a child totally um, possible it but, is totally possible yeah. not saying that it's not but, but it's um, way more common kids, it, right? it is yeah. way more but see with children you can tell when a child has a fever um because when we when we get a, a child that's teething, their their cheeks might get a little bit red, they're kind of a little bit miserable, they're a little bit cranky, and you know they might have like a, a low fever, like ninety nine to a hundred. But when a child has a fever that's a little bit higher, mm -hmm. the eyes get glassy, yeah. the face gets red, um, they're inconsolable, and you can you can tell the difference between a teething fever and an actual sick fever. And I've noticed that a lot. Just, just with the eyes even, right? Oh, what? yes. Because like when a child wakes up from a nap, and we've had this happen a couple times, and they've come out and they've been like, I don't feel so good. And you look at their eyes and their eyes look like glass. And they then you can tell that, okay, okay, we're dealing with something a little bit more serious than teething. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just on, let's just see here. I'm gonna, oh, so you can buy them. I, I guess so. So, well, you know what? We're going to order something live here <laughs> when I get you guys. If, if Chuck, if you see something. So here are 
some glass this is thermometers. Our, .ca. Okay. This is Amazon.ca. Teething feeders are a nightmare. Is it? Is that what you? Uh, teething feeders? What are fevers. They? Fevers. Oh, I was like, they are. I, yeah. And oh, like, yeah, because like they, they just hover around that hundred to sometimes a hundred and one, and they'll but hold. But they'll hold, yeah. and they're so, and the kids are so miserable, right? And they rub and, their cheeks, and they're and, rubbing, and they're grinding, and. And they're inconsolable, and and there's like, and you can give them Tylenol and everything, but but there is a big difference between a teething fever and an actual sick fever. And a sick fever is like the child is absolutely you can you can see it all over them, right? That's cute. Uh, one step says frozen waffles can help young ones with teething pain. We use um well we use frozen uh yogurt tubes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, those are those worked good. So um, I'm trying to see which one might work here, guys. That one kind of looks like it might be the right size, eh? Is that like in a case? Yeah, that's the case holding it. Okay. No, that would keep it from getting broken. Yeah, because when I was a kid, <laughs> I used to break them on the regular. Let's see if we can find a better picture Why here. Why would you break so, them on the I would drop them because I'd move around like a friggin' idiot. You know me. <laughs> so actually, that one looks better. See that one? Yeah, it's that's It's got a, a nice stainless one. steel case. Yeah. You wanna, want that one? Mm -hmm. All right, let's buy it now. I think. All right. So yeah, so Make that'll sure give us. The... Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Place. It, it does it automatically anyway. Well, so, you never. Yeah. Sometimes it brings up yeah. cards that are expired. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so we're missing. Oh, we got twenty-one people in here now. We were missing a glass thermometer, <laughs> so we now have an EMP EMP proof thermometer coming in for our uh, um, our thing. You know. So yeah. Backwood says he's struggling tonight. <laughs> He, he said, then they usually lead to an eye infection. He meant an eat infection. He meant an ear infection. <laughs> we love you, Kyle. Actually, you're, you're... We, we have a little one out at the daycare now. Um, she's she's cutting some molars. And she actually, it. she's got a little bit of it. It's going to her ears. And yeah, she's just miserable. What a sin, hey? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, um, here, let's yeah. let's bring in the bigger container. Oh, what's this back here? Oh, this was, sorry. Yep, there you go. That's just, just a couple of our yeah. little extras. So this here, guys, is trauma wound dressing. I won that from a giveaway from uh, Nurse Amy <laughs> and uh, Doc Bones years ago. It just went in there. And, uh, oh, okay. Well, yeah. that can go so, in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know how it got into this package. but So here's the bigger one, guys. And it has four locking clasps, but the same rubber seal around the outside to keep it from being yeah. uh you know i we've never had any water infiltration no we keep it up on the shelf and in a pinch remember when we first started traveling we used to take the the otc medicine one with us on the road remember or no remember back when we okay so back when we first started putting together a first aid kit the very first one we had was a soft-sided uh 12 12 pack beer case yep. cooler remember and it was cool and oh chuck's got my kits oh well, we will. I'm going to be down south in just over a month, Chuck, and we will. Uh, I'm excited. That's awesome because I want to have one for in the vehicle too. Yeah. So anyway, I had a. It was a 12 or 24 pack soft sided beer case, and that's all we had. Remember, because we were just getting started. We never well, had and money. and the whole purpose of us buying these, right, is that they're they're manageable that I can carry them. We can see through them. We can see through them, and if we have to get out quick, yeah, we know exactly where they are, and we can grab them. Right. So we got to get her to dodge. Yeah. We got it. So. And uh, Rachel says her, her mom used a clean cloth dipped in juice and froze. Yeah. That's a great idea. Sure. All right. You want to start this? Yes. I'm actually a little more proud of this. This box is a good <laughs> box, but we'll see where we're at here. So there you go, darling. Re okay. Make sure you describe what they are. Okay. So this is flexible rolled gauze from Band-Aid. Now, we could always have way more of this, but we, we can have way more. Of yes. This, yeah. They, Especially um, living with him. Bear independent. Um, he has, you guys, he, anyway, he... He, a refuge medical. He sells entire five gallon buckets full of gauze. Oh, geez, we so, don't need that much. Oh, yeah. Well, Chuck, Chuck's, don't say that. He's going <laughs> to jump through the screen and shoot you. There you go. What do you got so, next? Um, okay. So this is small 25 pack of gauze pads. And this is Life Brand. So again, this is a generic brand that we get from Shopper Strip Mart. Right. Up here. See, Chuck says we don't have enough gauze. <laughs> the, that's the only right answer. I promise okay. you, you will find that. Well, out. I'm not carrying a five gallon bucket of gauze. So, what, what did you use the other day for me? I had a blister, a really nasty blister on my heel. It was just um, was it medical tape. Medical tape. Yeah. Worked like a dream. So, this is, these are large gauze pads. Again, from like the shopper's drug market. Again, so like there's nothing wrong with buying 
the generic. No, you don't, as I bring it's all, Yoda it's all the name. same. Yeah. Well, and then we yeah, have yeah. the the brand name, but but it's all like we buy on sale. Yeah. So, and this is cushion care gauze pads, large ones. This one's cool. You can buy that same stuff at the farm store with different yeah. colors for horses. So this is hurt free wrap. Yeah, it's like stretch wrap, but stretch it goes. Wrap. Yeah. yeah. Long term preps by cases. He's not wrong again. <laughs> I love you, Chuck. This is something that I bought because yep. we needed it. This is a padded aluminum splint. Yep. And I'm sure I could have a better one. I'm not saying I couldn't. Yeah. But at least we have something. Because that when we bought that three, four years ago, that yep. was a fairly significant purchase to add to our so, yes. So okay. I want to so you guys and you know, can tell it's never been holy opened. shit. We got 30 people in so here. So I've never right actually you. had to use this on Tim yet. No, thank God. <laughs> also, for the record, today while I was painting the yeah, I will in my I love Chuck, he's so awesome. Anyway, so today, guys, I was painting with block it, which is a stain blocking paint, and I'm rolling <laughs> the roof, the ceiling, sorry, and all of a sudden this big glob about the size of a really big frozen pea come right down and landed right on my fucking eyeball. <laughs> and it stung like a bastard. You tell this like same with that uh, when we lived out east. Yeah. Hunt, I gotta go to outpatients. I got something in my eye. Okay. I gotta yeah. tell you. We go to the doctor and the doctor says to him, he goes, Were you not wearing your safety glasses? And he's like, Well, no. He goes, Well, then I better not see you back in here again. And a week <laughs> later I was a in. A week later. Went back in, something in his eye again, and it was the same freaking doctor, mm -hmm. and he was, he was not, so pissed. He was not happy. <laughs> he was so pissed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've never in all my life worn safety glasses to paint, just rolling paint. I just never have. And so thank God I had the water on because I want to tell you, that hurt like a son of a bitch, like really, really bad, honey. Yeah. And I couldn't see out of that eye. It burnt. So, of course... One good thing to think about if you're working on a house is leave the water running as long as you can. And uh, of course, <laughs> I went into the hardware store a few minutes later and like, why is your shirt all wet? I'm like, oh, let me explain. But the, the sink, the kitchen sink did have a side sprayer. So yeah. that helped. But it really hurt spraying my eye with it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Idiot. So this is, uh, I don't know how to, uh, antiseptic spray. I'm not sure. What is Betadine. That? Betadine. Okay. Yeah. So the, it, this here, it's kind of looks like iodine. I think it has iodine in it, right? Yes. Yeah. So like when you spray oh, it. No, I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean no, to agree it with has 5% uh, iodine. Okay. So if you ever use this, be careful you're not used, because I have used it. Don't use it again, like with anything that you value, like, um, because it stains. Oh. oh, yeah. Like, so like, don't, don't spray it like on your bedding or on your furniture, or if you're going to spray it, uh, put something underneath because it does stain really bad and it yeah it it's awful. as a kid my parents had a glass jar of iodine and inside it had a hard plastic applicator uh, the one i the one my grandmother had had uh, a glass applicator oh it was inside like, or inside was it, yeah, yeah it was yeah, glass. i think yeah. it was it may have been yeah. glass i wasn't yeah but that thing was probably from the 1870s <laughs> and it was like, you remember when Jesus made water out of wine and it, he fed a thousand, whatever it was. He made iodine. Yeah, I think he made iodine at the same time because I'm going to tell you, that bottle never ran out. No, it never does. Because uh, you don't need very much They're going to pass it down to their great-grandchildren. and Do they still have it? Yeah, probably. I don't know. <laughs> Your dad probably but still like has like seven it. generations down the road, they'll be like, Grandpa, can you tell me the story of where that iodine came from? Be like, well, let me tell you. There was this crazy cook fella. Oh, anyway, so that's what would happen, so. There you go, sweet pea. So we got fabric bandages. Um, I find, actually, we were talking about this the other day. The fabric ones oh, are yeah. a lot better than the plastic ones. Yeah. Um, they're, like, unfortunately, like, they're really gross when you go to pull them off your skin and you get, like, that really brown I, Yeah, I ain't line. worried about that. But, though. no, like, but I'm just saying, like, I know when you, like, you just put it on your finger and it it's, like, they get nasty. But they actually hold a lot better than the, the cheap plastic ones. So this is interesting. Joshua, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna say Winnie. I might be wrong. It might be Win. Says just an offhand note. I I pl a place I worked at had a medium safe. Off-brand batteries would not operate it. Only brand name batteries would. My guess is it's probably the voltage mm -hmm. because a lot of the cheaper ones have lower voltages. I ran into that with the nine volt. Is that right? The nine volt square ones. Yeah. yeah. The nine volt rechargeables I bought. They they were great in smoke detectors, but some 
volt, some of them required more voltage and they ended up measuring at like 8.2 volts or something. So they wouldn't run some of the higher voltage things. So, uh, okay. Byron Roberts says, brake cleaner in your eye hurts. Yeah, no <laughs> shit, dude. Brake cleaner in your eye is going to burn your eyeball out. <laughs> Chuck says, you'll learn when you get someone else's blood in your eye. Ask me how I know. That's how Brendan Gleason died in uh, 28 days later. 20, yeah. At least he got infected. Look, if you want zombies, that's how you get zombies, Chuck. So be careful. Yeah. <laughs> this is how we get zombies. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go, darling. So these are these are more fabric bandages. Oh, I don't know how we got two of those. Um, oh, we got another splint. You know how we probably got two of those is you probably ordered one off of Amazon. And then I put one in the safe for later, thinking that you wanted it, and then yeah. I ordered it again. And okay, so. so Chuck, okay, this I want to talk about this because he's right. You need twenty times more than that with band aids. Yeah. So with it will be your most used medical prep. They are the most consumed item in a household full of children. Yeah, well, I'm I am gonna say that's why I says we had like a metric shit ton of these, but we have a daughter who is. Every time, if she gets like um okay i don't want to be over dramatic but it, but it is true she'll get like a little bit of uh you know how you get like the skin hangnail she'll pull it and if she sees a tiny bit of blood she'll come get a band-aid and she'll change said band-aid about times. seven or eight yeah. times every time and so we she will <laughs> go, says you need 50 times more. Yeah, yeah she will go through one of these boxes probably in like two days oh yeah it's yeah it's ridiculous so i just so, want to thank everybody who's here so far we topped out at 34 live viewers nice that's a new record for us so thank you guys it's so great. we have uh flex fabric band-aids then we have true stay band-aids those are the clear ones that are supposed to like never come off they're I think, supposed, yeah. i don't even i don't think she's open that she hasn't opened that because she, she doesn't know they're in there yeah so. the, these are near the bottom um we have more uh gauze pads i also i don't yeah. know we mentioned this over oh, at 35 i i was saying this the other day that as you get older your skin gets thinner mm -hmm. and uh i mean i noticed that i mean my poor grandmother's skin was just about see-through when she <laughs> passed away but i've noticed that over the last few years my uh my arm my arm and leg scratch just a little easier than they used to so 36 viewers. If you haven't hit the like button, hit the smack that uh, up button there for me. What else we got, there? So we got some more large gauze. And we have medium gauze. <laughs> Maybe you're at 40. Oh, shit. Hey, right <laughs> on, guys. Thank you. So these Good are see these are cosmetic pads. Now, we, I use these. They're not sterile at all right. but they are they do work good if you have to like pack something and like maybe put the sterile gauze and then this on top type yeah. of thing but they yeah work they're, good. they're they're a good space filler too yeah. right did oh here this is this one i love this stuff so this is uh it's medical tape right this is next care and it's water resistant medical tape medical tape's awesome they <laughs> stick stuff to anything and this is more of that hurt free wrap I don't know how I mixed my drinks in here, but there you go. Two <laughs> bottles of rubbing, or, well, it's rubbing alcohol, but yeah. it is alcohol. So if Chuck's, yeah, Chuck's still in here. Yeah. I heard recently they said that 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol is better than 99%, like this stuff is. Mm -hmm. I think that was all we could buy at the time. Yes, But they said, all... if if what I read was correct, they said this evaporates too quickly and doesn't do its job. Oh. So I don't know if it's true, but I'll take anything over nothing. Yeah. What's so that we mean? got more water-resistant medical tape <laughs> look at that tincture of iodine <laughs> it's a there's devil's the, elixir there's the famous iodine we have some oh this is uh con contributions of von i think no yeah. no no yeah. actually did you buy these i bought those at our lo so i love our local drugstore if you go in so this, this is sterile water yeah just saline for irrigating yeah. wounds our local drugstore has an incredible selection of stuff that i would call medical supplies and i don't mean like hospital supplies so it's the stuff they'll buy in big containers and they'll open it up and sell it like that okay. and i love that because you for a long time i couldn't get saline on the shelf now can you make it sure you can but um yes correct during the shortages the 99 percent was more easily available and that's what we run into yeah gracie hey, yeah we... and, and this is one of our what we call a consumer yeah uh she was chasing her idiot dog and she wiped <laughs> right out and <laughs> It just, just decimated her No leg. drinking involved whatsoever. No, no, she wasn't drunk yet. No, no. but yeah, she uh, was chasing her 
stupid dog that likes to hop fences. So I think it was what seventeen hundred and forty-two band aids. Oh, it was awful. I actually life. felt really bad for it, yeah. but it was funny. We laughed dogs at the same idiot. time. There you go, baby. What's that? <laughs> so these are instant cold compresses. So you have to break them, and then you get your instant cold. Yep. Not not a cold infection, but cold. no, no. <laughs> It's like a nice yeah. pack. Yeah, I was gonna. I was pretty sure. Chuck says you can use treated tap water, just as effective as saline or sterile water. Look the studies up. So, and that makes sense. We're at forty-four live viewers. Nice. You see, awesome. I'm just gonna check out because they only come to see the hot Mrs. Cook. It makes me happy. So, no, uh, this one. I love this little. This bag one here. to hear my rant. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this this is a uh, Steri strips and this is Steri strips, and we have see-through bandages. Or uh, something? May, is it me pour or may pour? They're um they're like large bandages that you just stick on. Yep. And actually, I think I bought those when I had when we were in the city. I had just got my tattoo, and yeah. I wanted to go in the hot tub, so I was covering it covering it up with those. You know, when my grandfather he passed away at like sixty four, he used to I can't remember why, but my grandmother used to have to put medical tape on his chest. I don't know. I don't remember why. It was to hold something or to keep pressure. I don't remember, but yeah. Yeah, and then these are these are more bandages. Backwood says we have stitching needles just in case. I'd rather not go to the hospital. Well, I actually, uh, speaking dude. of that, I actually bought that kit a for practice a kit. suture practice kit. And uh, I am going to get around to show, teaching the girls how to do it. It's, it's just like this little zipper. And it's like rubber that resembles skin and you can practice sticking. last time we tried to test it out i wouldn't sit still that was part of the problem <laughs> so what do you got there what's that so we have oh yes because we don't have an oversupply of these these are masks yep n95 masks put them in so we love in case you don't know we love ziploc bags we use yes i use ziplocs for everything it's like frank's red hot sauce put that <laughs> shit in everything i love my so ziplocs I here, do. here's something else notice the label show them the label on it Okay, so those are small gloves. Those are for you. These are for me. Because yes. I have to have the massive double XL uh, so, grease monkey gloves. Yeah, so these are mine. Yeah. Um, and these are, uh, like, we put them in the Ziploc because they come in those ridiculous cardboard boxes yeah. that Which if just they get wet, down. they're garbage, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. <coughs> what we got there? Oh, there's some. Uh, these are alcohol wipes. Yep. And there's actually, I think there's iodine wipes in here as well. Uh, the, yeah, this is uh, iodine wipe. And these are compliments of VON. Yes. And yeah. Chuck will be very pleased at, uh, with us about this. He says to buy full cases. We ordered that on Amazon. Yeah, that's so, an alcohol prep pad. Yeah, an entire full case of alcohol prep wipes. So there's the pads. iodine prep pads. Yeah, those are great. Oh, there we go. And, of course, we always have our handy-dandy polysporine. Yep. And, just, and I don't know if anybody's... But I use this on the animals too. Yeah. Like uh, sometimes we get the dogs get into things. And we'll buy. You can buy the no name three in one ointment. Yeah. It, I love. I and we did have like six of these, these in there, but mysteriously our uh, consumers have taken them. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so, more saline. There you go, baby. Yeah. More saline water. There's some more saline. I bought a bunch. Uh, there is some. There's a a sprain wrap. Those uh, these are finger finger splints, finger splints. There's some more betadine, more betadine syringes. And what are they for? These are, sir yeah, these are syringes yeah, for um, irrigating wounds, for irrigating they're, wounds, they're, or yeah, syringes without the needle. For those who don't know, yeah, there's no, there's no needle. Well, yeah. actually, I think there is a needle on is those it? ones. Okay, I might have bought them at the farm store. Yeah, there, the there are needles shop. on that. Um, and then there's uh, nose sailing there oh, for yes. little guys. That's what's left of my massive extra large those gloves. Those are Tim's gloves. They're black. He, um, where do you buy those they're, from? From the Napa? The, no, uh, uh, from the farm supply. Far, farm supplies. They're the, I buy the heavier duty ones. They're 50 to a box and they're called grease monkey gloves. Yes. And now I know Chuck's going to say, don't your whack. You know why? Because <laughs> you can't see the blood on them. Exactly. But, but it's the only thing that will fit his hands. Yeah. Now, could I probably special order them somewhere? Sure. But again. Something's better than nothing. So we have a pair of EMP shears. Yep. Safety scissors. There you go, baby. Uh, after bite. And that's for your mosquito bites. And we always have, we have Q-tips. 
cotton swab so we don't have to pay royalties to uh, Johnson <laughs> yeah. and Johnson. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, a lighter. Yeah. Well, there's look at that. That's a little pull. No, those are uh, emer those are easy pull band aids. They came in like this little tiny fan pack. That's pretty much it. And then another we got our hand scissors. sanitizer in there. And another finger splint. And another finger splint. And yeah, and the rest is stuff that will probably end up going the way of the dinosaur because we yeah. have open stuff. So let me put that over here. And you can, do you want, where do you yeah, want this just to put it right here on my lap. Okay. Yeah, I'll put it back in there. This is great that people will sit in and hang out with us while we organize <laughs> our first aid supplies. Because, again, part of the reason we do this is so that we can share with you guys, but also so we can... Uh, get shit done because well, and we can be held accountable for what we're missing exactly because we spend and it's actually not as bad as i thought it no it wasn't um our otc needs a little bit or over to counter stuff and we need yeah. a shit ton more band-aids so well if we can keep the kids out of them then yep. yeah uh your mom says we should include bug spray and sunscreen in a sling or two you know we did have a sling at one time and i don't, I don't know, know what happened, happened to it sling. so but um not that it's it's not in here but i do keep bug spray and sunscreen in the truck multiple containers of each so because typically when you need it it's outdoors but um but yeah that is a good one to have for sure uh grace says same with the iodine can be used in animals like miss quinn for her chin did she have the she's cat got have a... she's got um cat acne and oh. it got infected or... is she a teenager or something is that what it is well, the vet said it was from uh from what i've seen online they can get it uh cats can get acne on their chip from metal bowls oh okay so just probably from rubbing all the time yeah it's maybe, rubbing or? and and she like if they rub the bottom of the bowl a lot she's some animals are more prone to it than others i'm gonna look up and see if there's a good bulk pack of fabric band-aids from amazon let's let's do a little amazon shopping here so um if anybody see what that it's a 60 count I'd love to have like a 600 count. <laughs> that would be nice, wouldn't it? But I don't know. What do you think, Carolyn? What a 60? Oh, there's 300. We need a zip stitch. Zip set. Zip stitch. Oh, what? Oh, is that uh, for wound closure? I think that's the thing where you stick it on both sides and then you pull it and it it snugs everything in together. Kind of works like a zipper, but it's not a zipper, I know. Okay. Oh, he knows a guy can get a bulk. That's true. You know what? I'll <laughs> stop looking on Amazon because yeah. at least this way I know that they weren't whatever he's... Um, gonna get me probably weren't made by small Chinese children in a sweat shop somewhere, right? Yeah, so that's true. Yes, that's uh, maybe we'll talk about getting some bulk gauze and some bulk band aids because, yeah, you know, the problem with buying this, like this right here. It, well, I guess that one isn't too bad, but you know, if you go and you buy band aid brand <laughs> band aids and you buy the 300 bulk pack, yeah, and it comes with four band aids you'll use, three butterfly band aids, and 822 band-aids that are no bigger than your pinky nail i like those really big rectangle ones like like that like you can right here those yeah, ones? like so like if you wrap it around your finger you can actually wrap your entire finger instead mm -hmm. of taking a whole bunch of the little ones right <laughs> awesome yeah there so chuck will deliver to tennessee so okay. that'll be great and chuck is doing a uh, emergency medical course i believe i think it's a day before self-reliance festival so okay I think I might be wrong, but uh, yeah, see, like that Curad one, that you one? Know, you know, or no, the other one, like, or when you get those like mega boxes of band aids and they give you those little tiny, well, that's what I would like right those, there, those little circle you know, ones. Like, you get, what, what the hell do you use you those get, for? So you get seven of the big ones, three of the medium, three of those, and 77 warp band aids. You know, it's like just <laughs> in case you advance wound care on Sunday, that's it. Okay, and what about the and they have the little round one that there. one there? Yeah, like again. what does that do? Like if you're gushing blood, what, what's that going to do? Right, and this one here, Thrive Adhesive Band Aids package of 305. Let's take a look and see what is included in that because let's see. Look, there it is. See, there's the truth multi purpose. So, do you think it actually gives us a breakdown of how many you get of each? Uh, it looks. Like, I don't know. It doesn't know. really give a full list, but yeah. Anyway, no. I don't know if I would. Trust I just those, like the so. I like the big square ones that you can put over your like it can do your entire finger, and well, you get a hundred large, seventy five intermediate, sixty five small, and sixty five circular. Why do you need sixty five circular? Like what do you? Because gonna... it pads up the numbers. You got to pump them numbers up. That's <laughs> what happens. You know this. But what do they do though? Like I, I've never figured those out. 
Like, it is, uh, yeah. I, I Like, I, is it for an injection? Like, obviously an injection site. But I, are you going to go around injecting people? Like, I, I think here's it, a Band-Aid. I think it's to hide your track marks if you're a junkie. I don't know. I mean, I, well, I thought. you're smart, you put the track marks under your nails. That way or nobody Or between knows. your fingers or, or toes, right? Toes, yeah. Right. yeah. There's nothing else I didn't learn from 90s films. It was, if I ever become a heroin addict, is to inject between my toes. That way the cops can't find No, you. and that way, you know, insurance will still cover you because they won't know if you OD and they'll be like, well, we didn't think to look between his toes now, did we? So <laughs> it covers it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I guess. Yeah, you can cover something with it, but... Not I mean, much. but it does come with a handy dandy storage bag. So I do there's like that. The bag. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, you know what though? Else, that but... bag, if it was a little bit bigger, yeah, would be good because it, it would eliminate a lot of these boxes. That's a good point. And the boxes do take up a lot of room. You know what? Well, let's go down. When we go down, I will message. Uh, we'll talk to Chuck, and we will find the side, the type of band aid that we really need the most. You know, of. what would work good is a large cloth pencil case. Yeah, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, and uh, um, Backwood says they're to cover up your teardrop tattoos when you cover and uh, clock into work. I don't know. I I, I got them because... Can you of, imagine you have like 10 band-aids going down your face? Be like, every weekend you come back to work and you got one more band-aid on. You're like, uh, um, are you okay? I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 nothing's wrong. You know? It's like, where do you go on the weekends? Uh, I paint houses, if anybody knows that reference, so... Oh my goodness, that yeah, that would be something, wouldn't it? So that was a look into our our semi messy first yeah. aid thing, you know what I mean? So, so what else we've been up? Uh, uh, SOE toiletry bag. Oh, we can check that out. I love John. John makes some good shit. Um, yeah. In case anybody wants to see, there. Uh, fuck your feelings. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> it's technically, you know, what's it got a dollar sign in there? Yeah. But I love that shirt. I realized I wore it the other night when I showed an apartment. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> they I, don't like it. They don't have to. That's look my at favorite it. one. I love the friggin' smiley face on it. It's absolutely great. And but yeah. Um, what else we've been up to? Uh oh, we're basically ready with the, you. You did some Zoom interviews for your business. I did, you know, yeah. For the uh the Lloyd Minster location yeah, for our actually, very first satellite. Uh, Go ahead, sorry. Uh Chris called me today. That's the realtor. The realtor, and he said that um the landlords have had a draftsman draw up uh the plans okay and they've had uh some uh contractors in, all lined up so and they know that i'm you're shooting to be open for october 1st oh, and i've you? made that abundantly clear to them so uh so they know i'm not dinking around so uh, yeah you haven't helped anybody who's on the other end of the phone with you <laughs> because there there ain't no there there is no such thing as no you do not take you don't take no for an answer i don't and no. you don't even take maybe no. You're like, get back to me now, bitch. And I get, well, and I get right. For, and I know Friday you can't get much accomplished anyway, but I just leave work on Friday and I'm just like, huh, well, I'm going to be jumping down your throat on Monday morning then because there's no, there is no, I'm sorry. If you're working on a Friday, you're still clocked in. You need to work. Why are you not answering my emails at 1130 in the morning? So I'm just, uh, nope. So there's about three people that I got to jump down their throats on Monday morning because I don't, I don't like it when they don't call me back. So you actually hired a couple people. Uh, well, I, I sent out offer letters. Off, sent out offer letters. To... Uh, one has responded. The other one hasn't. Uh, but you know, it's only been a day. Right. So I got yeah. back the, uh, the new logo for the truck. Yeah. It's not much different. It's going to be the, so it's going to be tool man, Tim. But beyond that, it's going to uh, it's going to have property management below it. So <laughs> we're only modifying the existing All Seasons logo. It's going to save us quite a bit of money. Yep. And it's going to yeah, our local uh, um, it's time promotions does it, and pretty soon they're going to have it. Yeah, they're going to they're printing it probably today, and hopefully next week we'll have it up on the. Uh, on oh the no, it'll be on on next week. Oh yeah, for I'll sure. message her and get it on there. One step closer says uh, I need Becky to negotiate my next pay raise. I, I, it won't I just be it. a pay raise. It'll be a promotion too. <laughs> I serious. I don't, I don't like, no, I don't like no for an answer because like, I, I think it's because I, I deal with the government a lot and Try there, the there's nothing I hate more than people who don't take responsibility for their actions and who do not take like um, control over their job. Mm -hmm. Like this is what you do. You have, there's no excuse why you're not doing it, except for the fact that you're lazy. So just get it done 
and let's quit dinking around and let's just do it. And I, and I try not to get frustrated with them, but I know the one guy I'm dealing with, I know he's just dinking me around and I, and it was because it was Friday. Right. Right. And it's like, just, just get it done. Dude, like, there's no reason why you can't. It's like, uh, you know, I, I know I got here a little late today, and now it's coffee break time. Yeah. I, by the time I get back from coffee break, it'll be time for me to go to my union mandated lunch. Yeah, and, and like nobody on, ever takes ownership for anything, and it's, it's casual so, Friday, oh, and yeah. we uh, we get to wear t-shirts and we get to leave at three o'clock, but mm. uh, which means we we stop answering the phone at two. We stop returning emails at one yeah, right. and you know, eventually we're just going to stop fucking coming in on Fridays and we're going to call and then Thursday. Well, then don't Friday. come in on Fridays. So right. You know what I mean? Like if you're not going to be there to work, then don't waste my time. Just quote for 25 cent wings on Thursday night and call it a week. So, well, and I know, and I, cause I know I was a little choked about the bank today because I sent her a message at nine 30 in the morning and then she messaged me back at 1130 and told me she called. And I'm like, well, you're lying. <laughs> no, you didn't. Because I have my phone right here and nobody has called me. And she said, oh, I tried calling. What does that even mean? Means I, how, how do you how do you try to call somebody? Like you you picked up, dialed half the number and then hung up? It, it or means like, I thought about it. Yeah. Uh, like, I thought about it yesterday. Now I feel <laughs> guilty. So I'm going to tell you. It, it, it's the same old tricks when I worked at Home Hardware. But how do you try to call somebody? Just, I, I tried you, to you call lie. you and I'm like, well, okay. So you called me and my voicemail picked up or you called a number and didn't let it ring and hung up beforehand. I, I'm not understanding. I don't have a missed call. I don't have a voicemail. I, you know, what, what, what happened? Did, did we have a wire cross? I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. Well, and I'm dealing with AGLC too, which is, um, I don't know what that is. AGLC is our game and license commission. Oh, uh, so I can get a, a, a license okay. so we can do a raffle mm -hmm. and, there's this, so we, we've incorporated and I'm incorporated through Corporations Canada, which is federal and federal means the entire country. Okay. It does not mean specifically anything. I am incorporated through the entire country. She calls me back and tells me that I have to be incorporated in Alberta. Are you serious? Yes. Oh my goodness. So I explained to her, no, I'm incorporated federally, which covers every province in Canada. I don't have to be incorporated in Alberta. Uh, she says, and, I'm, and so I'm like, okay. So I, because that's on Thursday when I said, okay, I'm going to Lloyd. Sure. And then she calls me back and she goes, no, just hang on a second. Uh, don't go anywhere because Lloyd is an hour drive. And she goes, no, we might be able to make this work because you said you were federally. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, okay, no fucking shit. No shit. That's exactly what I just told you. Then she sends me an email today wanting to know why there's a discrepancy between our for-profit, uh, like our sole proprietor business mm -hmm. and our corporation business, why one is in Alberta and one is federal. And I said, well, because we <sighs> incorporated federally and she goes can you explain this to me and i'm like i'm pretty sure i explained it to you yesterday on the phone and i said that in the email too and uh, i said you know what i'm not wasting my time anymore on this today i will go up to lloyd monday morning i will get the alberta corporation done so that we have no more red tape on this it blows but me that's away. that's what it is. I mean, that but she is... totally acted like she had no clue what I told her the day before. That's right up there with the time that they asked you to refax something because it printed out upside down. Yes. Because they didn't know how. It showed to... up on their computer upside down because they didn't have a rotate button, apparently. But they didn't realize they could print it and rotate the paper. So I had to resend it, yes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. What the hell are you going to do? Yeah, so it was just one of those, yeah, it was one of those days today. And uh, and then when I read her email tonight, I was like, yep, yeah, I'm I'm done with you. <laughs> so what time I'm, was that at? That was about, eh, about quarter to four. So I'm just like, no, nope, I'll deal with this on Monday. So she's one of the ones I'm going down her throat on Monday. So, so what projects are we going to work on this weekend? Am I going to finish our deck with our leftover material? I would love to finish the deck that in, would be in our yard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That was it. And I'd like and... you to come over and see the uh, wheelchair ramp at the daycare. Just yeah. well, an we idea. I'm not going to build it, but I just want you to see yeah. it. So, And uh, oh, Backwoods says, 
two things. First off, he said, I was reaching for the phone and was attacked by ninjas. I apologize. <laughs> hey, at least that's a legitimate excuse because mm -hmm. uh, Wylena says those ninjas are very tricky, which they are, yep. you know, legit. And then a uh, backwood says, I was so pissed off with my local government that I unfortunately now part of the zoning board. <laughs> oh, man. You got roped into that one. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas Sowell. I can never pronounce his last name. Anyway, nailed it when he said to a bureaucrat, to a bureaucrat processes everything and results are nothing. hundred mm -hmm. percent. We, I, I've said this many times and we were talking earlier today, I was talking about um, Atlas Shrugged and how yep. they literally let people die in a train tunnel because nobody would take, um, they, they, nobody would jump in and say, all right, this is what we do. Because everybody was scared that they would be held responsible for it. So nobody would ever once do it. Well, that's because nobody wants to take ownership. Ever, 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 ever. ever. That is government from the bottom to the top, from the beginning to the end. Oh, yes. Is that, you know, the, nobody ever, ever wants to take ownership for anything. And it has got a lot worse since COVID. It oh has yeah, a lot. Worse. I, and and I have no problem with people working from home, but I want to say that a big portion of that is the working from home mentality because mm -hmm. there's even less um, oversight. So people just they just pass because you know for years you, you dealt with people when you'd call up phone phone It'd be in a call center. Yeah, yeah, and oh, it's mm -hmm. just so bad, so bad. Well, like the other day, um, I was calling the CRA, which is the Canadian Revenue Agency, mm. Wednesday afternoon. I was given a call because I'm I was calling for Olivia and they told me that my wait time was from two to four hours. Wow. Thank like, goodness. I mean right? but, <laughs> two but, to, but two to four hours. But don't forget like really more taxes will fix climate change. And yes, here's your hundred dollars back. I hope you're fucking happy. Yeah. So you should be happy and you should oh, enjoy it. Two to four hours. And I was like, yep, no, I'm hanging up. I'm not even gonna bother. I watched a 45 minute interview after you slept last night. I was laying in bed, couldn't sleep. Milton Friedman <laughs> on Phil Donahue's show. Oh, okay. And he he's a, a free free market capitalist. Oh my God. The stuff he had to say was so good. And he, uh, I, I clipped a little seg segment out of it because Donahue kept asking, well, isn't there a need for government intervention at certain times? And he said, no, no never, no. absolutely never. Because he said, I'm, I'm not for fairness. I'm for freedom. And I thought, boy, if that wasn't one of the best lines I had heard in Well, weeks. and anytime the government gets involved with anything, it never ends good. No. And it always ends up costing everybody money. Yep. So it just... Because how can something be more efficient? I do not understand how anyone can look at it and think, we need the government involved. Because all you're adding is an, an intermediary or a third party, which costs money. Mm -hmm. So instead of, you know, person to person, individual you know, capitalism, what do we end up with? Well, let's, let's give a whole bunch of money to the government. Let's filter it through. And when we're done, we'll have about 10% of what we started with and we'll be less effective. And than have if, a lot of pissed off people. Right. If so. we let the free market do it <laughs> itself. So the only <laughs> chicken hawk says the only good the government does is undoing what they have done. And like I said, that that's about the moral equivalent of cutting the top of a blanket off, sewing it to the bottom and telling you have a longer blanket. The problem so. is our government doesn't undo anything. I heard they good, always claim they're going to, but they never do. That's the equivalent. I heard a really good saying the other day where a lady, a lady said, uh, man, I won $2,000 at the casino. And he said, no, ma'am, you didn't win $2,000. You just stopped before you lost it. And I was like, <laughs> that's friggin' incredible. And that's, like, that's the government. How, many, how much did you spend to win $2,000? Right. Well, that's right? true too. You know, like if you, if you legitimately went into a casino and dropped 20 bucks on a machine and won two thousand dollars but even then that's incredible right? even what he said was you still didn't win two thousand you just stopped before you lost it yeah because i mean it's it's like government casinos are rigged through and oh, through yes. and so it they wouldn't be in business if they lost money so all she did was take her money out before she lost it and i was like that's pretty smart yep no i don't know i like i like casinos but yeah they wear on you after a while yeah, I think you're getting a little old on you. You used to enjoy them quite a bit. I like I, them. I don't mind them. I just don't like them. They're just so damn depressing. You go yeah, in I don't there. like pissing away money. No, and but you go in and you just see all these old people that you know are just pissing away their pension check <laughs> and, you know, trying to I stay know. awake at the slots. And you're like, ah, it just makes you feel bad. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it, like it's fun if you have, like, a, an extra couple hundred dollars and you want something to do. But, like, you can blow through $200 so quick in a slot machine and not even realize how you do it. Mm-hmm. 
and and it's yeah like you're lucky if you, sometimes you get like what 10 minutes worth of play yeah so well mrs cook i think we should wrap it up here we're an hour and a half in the crowd has dwindled down we we, we broke in your would we hit 42 or 40, 40 44 44 i think, I think I it see. was yeah so before we close out i'm going to try to play this clip again so you guys can hear it because okay. we like i said we because uh, you gotta end the night on another dreary night. no because we want to laugh and remember people for who they are and mm -hmm. uh Let's see if we can bring this up. We're going to see. I have the audio shared now, so you oh, should here be comes able to Buzz hear Killington. it. So. But how is that Buzz Killington? So we can laugh at Dale Gribble and remember him. I think that's great. Well, what, uh, what's this about guns being dangerous? Well, that's right. They kill people. Guns don't kill people. The government does. Oh, Hank, guns have been... That's got to be one of the greatest lines of all time. I <laughs> There's nothing any better. Like Charlotte said, that was the absolute best patch in the world. Guns don't kill people. The government does. And that sums up one of our favorite preparedness characters in pop culture. And uh, also, you know, um, yeah, how's our poll doing before oh, we go? Okay. Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. Hang on. One yeah. more thing before we and close up. And how up, then. close are we to? Wow, a little ways yet. I said it'd be about show. be about forty about forty days from nine thousand to ten thousand if my numbers are right. So, okay. so we're at I'm at ninety one hundred and. 50 subscribers so okay. we picked well, up we can always do it a little bit earlier couldn't we? i picked up 150 subscribers in six days okay. so we are we are we are very quickly pushing on to um 10 000. so let's go to our community we're going to check the poll results before we close up here guys let's bring it up so you guys can see it we'll share why don't you close them up tonight well we can and if then you we want can to announce all right so we had um i can't see how many okay 49 votes so I, I asked everybody the other day or do you want to leave it for the weekend yeah we'll leave it for the weekend okay we'll uh you know what yeah you can announce it on sunday sure i will so um i said we're going to do a uh another pop culture trivia night yep with prizes with really good prizes yeah. so oh, well yeah. becky's paying for them don't so. promise really good prizes because what we think are really good prizes somebody might think they're shit i don't so care i don't know like, i can call them good prizes if i'm giving them away so Horror films right now. So we give them three options. Horror, action, and 80s. Yes. So right now, horror's dead last. Oh, come on, guys. Which is fine because we really <laughs> want to do horror for Halloween. But yeah, but horror stuff so much easier to find good prizes for. McFly, 80s films, our autographed pictures. Oh, my God. You're awesome. Chicken Hawks are freaking so funny. 37% for 80s films. 41% for action films that aren't Christmas movies. So we are going to probably end up doing action films. May, hey, so. hey, hey, let's wait till the end of the weekend. That's true. I, I'll do. Get, okay. If you guys don't want to do horror, I, I'm pretty cool with 80s. Yes. Because oh. I have a lot of 80s shows. Byron Byron said uh, he'll be ready with his blockbuster shirt. <laughs> aren't those? Uh, they're incredible shirts. One they step are. closer says, get to the chopper. <laughs> so, yeah, I we'll see. We're, we're going to leave this up. So everybody go over to the YouTube channel. Go to the community page, and you can vote on which one we want to can, do. Can't for... you put it on like Facebook? Yeah, I, I can share. Sure, I can share. He's the gonna yeah. he's gonna share it on Facebook too because not everybody knows how to navigate YouTube. Right. Yeah. So, so I'll, well, all I can do is share it on Facebook for them to go to the YouTube link. But they can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm one of those people. I don't know how to navigate YouTube. Yeah. But no, so. we'll do that, and that'll give everybody a chance, and we'll do it on the. So here's the thing, I'd like to do it before I leave. So I well, think that's what we I'm should, saying. We'll probably yeah. do it a little bit early. So as long as everybody's cool with uh, celebrating 10,000 subscribers a week before we hit it, then we'll do it before I leave to go to Tennessee. Well, it's going to be a great show. It wouldn't be the same by trying to do it on the road with you here and me there. So No, because it, you never know. You might get lagging and yeah, stuff like that. You so. Know, so yeah, no, it'll be good. It'll be fun. And uh, it'll be a blockbuster time. We'll have a blockbuster evening. So yeah, and it doesn't have and I can let the horror go, but oh, I think yeah. the 80 films we're gonna do horror for Halloween. Although yes, I've been thinking about it. We have like 17 shows we want to do in October, and we're gonna be fucking gone the entire month. So I don't know how we're gonna do this, but we're only doing two shows. Oh my god. Well, we got um Rob, uh Rob and his wife are coming on. Tra that's for Rob the Halloween one. Yeah, they're yeah, that's what I was saying for October when we yeah. do October. Yeah, but that's gonna be the Halloween horror. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I want to do right? a couple episodes on ghost stories, people calling them with the real ghost stories. Okay. So yeah, well, that's just you. That yeah, it'll be me. I know, but <laughs> we're supposedly supposed to be in Hawaii at some of that time. So maybe we well, can do it. Well, maybe we'll see. Yeah. If not, maybe we'll do it from Miami. Doesn't matter. We'll do it. We love it. I mean, this is why we do it. We put out our 
We put out our content every week for yeah, you, and we'll, we have we'll, a good time. We'll figure it out. We yeah. always do. But Rob and Tracy are doing uh we're doing the horror the horror trivia. Oh with yeah, us, yeah, so. we're gonna have a lot of fun. We uh we we got you guys some pretty cool wedding presents. We're gonna send along. Hint, hint. I'm quite excited for that. So yeah, because they're not quite actually officially married yet, are they? Not yet. It's in October because we can't make it because we're gonna be yeah. So because yeah. you made me promise to take you somewhere nice, and now I have to be a dick because of it. So. I love you. All right, folks. Thank you very much. New record, 40. I think it was 44. Mm -hmm. I think that's where we hit. I don't even, they, they all just show up to see you. That's, that's all okay. it is. Yeah, I know. You, you're smiling, pretty face. So I'm just going to, eventually I'll just be a voice in the corner. I'll be yeah. like, I'll be your Rod Roddy to you. Oh, Bob they Arthur, can't put so. baby in the corner. No, that's true. So. Ah, that's an 80. <laughs> we love you guys. So as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great week. Byron says trivia night will be fun. Yes, it will. <laughs>